Good morning, welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Cliff Sargent. How's it going? Blood Meridian was originally requested by longtime viewer, Mr. Juan Perez. Thanks so much, Juan. Um, and also requested recently by a Torta90. I think it's time to take this on. Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Good guys versus bad guys. Oh wait, there are no good guys. Perfect. Cormac McCarthy is an American author living out in Santa Fe, which is where I just got back from, and he is considered by many to be one of the, if not one of the, if not the greatest living American authors. Most recently, his novels No Country for Old Men and The Road were massive successes and both were adapted into films. He is the Archbishop of Southern Gothic Literature. That's a fairly reductive title, so I think I'm just going to refer to him as one of the greatest authors in American history. Period. Yeah. That's fair. An unbelievably valuable mind and knee-jerk envy-inducing poetic sensibility. The man is untouchable, historically and presently. Blood Meridian, or The Evening Redness in the West, was published in 1985. You could refer to it as a Western or as an anti-Western. Both would probably be accurate. It takes place around the 1850s, weaving a gritty, disturbing, hallucinatory narrative about a young kid from Tennessee referred to only as the kid, who gets caught up in a marauding band of scalpers across the Texas-Mexico border. The Glanton gang was in fact a real life gang that did scalp Apaches. They were getting paid for it. They just happened to want to make more money, so they moved on from simply just Apaches to also the peaceful agrarian Indians and also Mexican citizens. This eventually led the state of Chihuahua to declare them outlaws. They were finally killed and broken up. Glanton himself even makes an appearance in the book. So throughout this gang that the kid is recruited into, you meet a whole host of characters as they travel along this very grim, barren land of death and violence. The historical cycle of man's inhumanity to man is beautifully illustrated in the personification of evil itself in the form of the antagonist, and I say that with a question mark, the antagonist of the book, Judge Holden, affectionately referred to simply as the judge. A judge of what? A judge of what? A giant, pale, hairless man with an omnipresent ability and a penchant for cruelty and pedophilia. Is he God or Satan? Or Woody Harrelson? As a gang of scalpers travels through the desert, the judge sketches species of animals at that time unknown. When asked by Toadvine, one of the main gang members and characters of the book, why he's doing it, the judge replies, whatever in creation exists without my knowledge, exists without my consent. There are some incredible literary references in this desolate southern backdrop. My favorite is when the gang of scalpers is chased by Apaches to the smoking summit mouth of a volcano. And they can see the Apaches coming up and they're out of gunpowder. But the judge knows that the chemical composition of the volcanic soil with sulfur will react with urine and will create a crude but usable dirty gunpowder. So you have this army of scalpers pissing on the soil of this volcano commanded by this laughing, maniacal Woody Harrelson about to be slaughtered by furious Apaches. And then it turns out that this is also a giant literary reference to John Milton's Paradise Lost. And then you think to yourself, is this the greatest book ever written? And the answer is maybe. If you break the rules, you know things that the others don't. 
When you do something evil, you don't simply break a rule. You learn something about yourself and about others. When can evil not only be moving, but essential and oftentimes even beautiful? Sometimes in life, um, often in literature, it would seem. Evil can also quite simply be evil. Hideous, nauseating, monotonous, repulsive, and detestable. As one critic noted, the violence in Blood Meridian, and there is plenty, plenty of it, illustrates the natural tendency for man to be violent and nothing else. In Blood Meridian, violence is violence, nothing more. It's not a clumsy plot device. Rather, the plot of Blood Meridian revolves around not if somebody is doing an act of violence, but rather whom is doing an act of violence, whether it's man, nature, or God. It speaks for itself, and it speaks very loudly. If there were ever a book to make a Christian believe in the wrath of a vengeful, jealous, cruel, and violent deity, or just to purely justify man's excommunication from the Garden of Eden, look no further. But the writing is distant, external, mysterious, kind of haunted, but it's punctual, and it hits like a crowbar to the spinal column. In its lack of an internal monologue and with its brevity and conviction, the writing itself feels violent. And yet, as I asked before, when is violence insightful, poetic, beautiful, and essential? And I think the answer to that is when its nature is illuminated by Cormac McCarthy. It's better than food. It's a damn good book. I mean... What you want to do is you want to go down to Santa Fe, you want to spend some time in the countryside out there, and you want to get yourself a bottle of Reposado tequila, put that shit on some ice, just sip, read, and look at the giant blue sky, and imagine all of the violence that was taking place about a hundred years ago around that territory. Holy shit. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please go pick this one up. I mean, it's definitely worth your time. Give me some recommendaciones and um, drop by in the comments below and say hi. Always remember what Mr. John Waters said. If you go home with somebody and they don't have books, don't fuck them. Ciao. Have a great day, guys. Bye.